Hi, Thomas Enquist here from Betsafe. Today we're looking forward to the Masters in Rome on the classic club Foro Italico. Yes, Thomas, but for a couple of minutes we stay in Madrid and this week's Masters in Madrid Open. Uh, we saw Rafael Nadal, he had a bad ear infl inflammation, so we didn't know should he play or will, it, will he pull out. But he plays and the way he plays, you can't say he's sick. No, absolutely not. I mean, he's so impressive at the moment, Rafael Nadal. And you can see how much he enjoys to play. He has now this confidence that he had many years ago when he was totally dominating the clay court uh, events. And he, he's back in this role when he wins a lot of matches. I mean, you can just see how much he believes in his game. Uh, I mean, last night against Curious is, is the same. And he just looks so confident, so strong. Um, when you, he plays like this, I mean, you, you, it's really difficult to imagine anybody to beat him. Is there anything special in his game that you can see that he has uh, very good self-confidence in his forehand, for example? Absolutely. I mean, he's back to really daring to hit his down-the-line forehand. And also, when you can see when he gets a little bit tight in the matches, he has this belief in his game now. Um, obviously, feeling healthy for a long time now, getting all these matches in a row, uh, the confidence that comes with this. And, and as all the great players, all the former number ones, when they get all these matches behind them uh, and they feel like, kind of like, I cannot lose, they are very difficult to stop. I'm not sure, but I can assume that we come back to Rafael Nadal later in this interview. Two other younger players that has impressed really in Madrid is Alexander Sasha Zverev and Dominic Thiem. Zverev took the title in Munich on Sunday and he had a tough draw in Madrid Open with Verdasco, Silic and Berdic. And what do you say about Sasha Zverev's week in Madrid so far? Yeah, what a way to, to follow up his win in Munich. Uh, these three very difficult matches. Super impressive the way Zverev is playing at the moment. And maybe this would be his really breakthrough. I mean, uh, he's been very impressive for a long time now. A player in a very young age, keeping develop, developing. Uh, every time you see him play, you think that he has progress, actually. So, I mean, we, we all believe that this might be... A a uh, future number one but of course it's difficult to to always to have those expectations on you like he has but he's doing very well at the moment and he has uh, a, a big maturity in his game for his young age i would say and uh, you can see how he's, he's focused and he's, he's all the time working to improve i think that his movement is much better now than it's been in the past and uh, again like i said i think this might be his big breakthrough and it's going to be interesting to, to follow him here in madrid and for, for the rest of this clay court season and the same with Dominic Thiem, of course. Yesterday he saved five match points against Grigor Dimitrov. Not only that, he, he lost the first set, he was a breakdown in second set, and he was a breakdown 2-4 in the third set. And the same as Sverev, Thiem plays so relaxed uh, and so tough on the important points. Are you surprised over that? Well, not really in a way, because uh, uh, TM obviously plays always very, very tough. I think he's a player that when it comes down to the, to the wire, when it comes down to the end of the matches, he's really swinging away freely. But I think it's, it's a lot of young players like this. I think they, uh, the, the older you get, the more, uh, uh, the more um, secure you will be you know, in, the, in, the, in the tight situations, because you really don't want to beat yourself. When, when you are a young player, you don't see those hurdles at all. You're just swinging away and you, uh, you, you, you only see the, the, the upside of it, you know, and you, you will play super aggressive even in the, in the end of each, of each match. And uh, it's pretty typical for young players coming up that they are a little bit more naive in a way, uh, in the way they play in the end of the game. And especially TM, who, who loves that uh, uh, aggressive play, even when it comes down to the, to the de decision moment in the match. Thomas, how tough do you think the loss was for Dimitrov? I mean, for several years we talked about him as the tennis next golden boy, and now we are talking about Sverev and TM more than about Dimitrov. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think it was a very tough loss to him because this is a big event. Uh, he started the year really well, Dimitro. Uh, we all had a feeling that this might be the year where he will, you know, take that last step. Um, and then he'd been struggling a little bit lately. So this was a, because he played well this week. He played really, really well. And that was a good match against TM. 
uh, and obviously he wanted to come out on top on that one to be able to continue this event because he played well uh, so I think that it's more this way I think he thinks I think he feel like he really want to have a, a, a good week here coming into Roland Garros uh, very shortly uh, so I think that uh, very frustrating for him of course to lose a match like that with all those match points but at the same time I think he's pretty happy with the way he plays uh, and I think that he's looking forward to, to Rome now to hopefully get a, 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 another good event for him. A player that n has not impressed its world number one, Andrew Murray, who lost to lucky loser Borna Koric. But Thomas, I don't want to talk just about uh, Murray's game, but also about his behavior against his team. Because I think it's dis disrespectful from him. He's a world number one. Uh, one, he's a father, he's a husband, he's 29 years old, but he, he, it seems like he's like a spoiled junior when he behaves like that uh, against his team. What do you think when you see him do like that? Well, I can see what you say, and I agree with you, uh, Jonas. I think that uh, it doesn't really represent him, because for me, Andy Murray is one of the best athletes. I mean, I speak about all the sports in the world. He's one of the best athletes in the world. Uh, double Wimbledon champion, double Olympic champion. Uh, it doesn't go together, I think, with the... With the uh, attitude he sometimes have on the on, on the court. I mean, he's so physically strong. Uh, he he can play six hours out there as long as he uh, as long as he wants. And uh, I don't understand actually why this haven't been able to 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 go away with 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 all the success he had. Um, usually, like you say, this is something that might be uh, in the beginning of a career when you're young and you it's difficult for you to handle the frustration. But now with with all the success he had, um, it's, it's it's difficult to 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 understand and sometimes why he behaves like he does uh, when things is not going his way. But he didn't act like this when he had uh, Ivan Lendl as a coach. So do you see, is, doesn't he have respect for his coaches after that and before Lendl? Well, it's, it's only Andy, actually, who can probably answer that himself. But, I, I mean, it's, it's obviously a way that he handles the pressure. I mean, you have players that, that need to break a racket or they need to shoot away a ball or they need to scream out the frustration. You have other players that can totally just keep everything inside and they don't need to show anything. Uh, obviously, I've, I mean, I don't know, but my view of this is like this is his way of, of, of handling the pressure. It's his way of, of, of dealing with when he's frustrated and when things is not going his way. Uh, but I think it's a fine balance of this when it goes way over and when it becomes just only negative energy. And that you can see sometimes when he's struggling and, and when he gets into these moments where he's, he's way too negative, I think it also affects his game. Yeah, because he's a fantastic player and he's a great fighter. So I, th I think it's a pity that he behaves like that. Not always, but too often. Another player, world number one next week, Angelique Kerber, uh, she left the court injured when she was down 3-6, love 5 against Eugène Bouchard. In, in my word, if you should leave the court at that point, you should do it if you be carried out from the court, not otherwise. Yeah, I can agree with that. I mean, I don't know exactly what happened, but if you're down 6-3-5, love, and if you're really not doing something uh, unbelievable on the court that you break something or you can absolutely not stand on your legs, you should definitely finish that match. I mean, it's uh, you, uh, to step off a court with 6-5, love, uh, it's, uh, I don't know what to say about that, actually. It's just ridiculous. We had come to the last part when it comes to your picks for... Uh, room masters but before that before madrid open we talked a lot about uh, how tough it is to predict anything in women's tennis and we have seen that in madrid open uh, timia bashinsky she beat easily gabine muguruza in the first round then lost big to kiki bertens in the second round kiki bertens lost in the uh, then to Sevastova, who in the first round beat word number three, Karolina uh, Pliskova. So it's totally unpredictable. And only five of the 16 seeds survived the second round. Among them, our two big favorites before Madrid Open, t title defender Simona Halep and word number 17, Kristina Mladenovic. How can you pick a winner for Rome, Thomas? Ah, it's very difficult, and it's exactly what we talked about before Madrid, that the, the, 
uh, game is so hard to predict uh, on the woman's side at the moment. Uh, they are beating each other and nobody's really dominating. But if I have to say one name, I would still say uh, Halep. I think that she has been consistent on the clay. She loves the clay. She's still uh, in, the, in the Madrid tournament. Uh, and I think she, she looks uh, uh, in, in, in both physically and mentally, she's, she, she's ready to win something big. So I think that uh, um, if I have to say one name, I would say Halep. Uh, but uh, to pick uh, the rest of the field, it's, it's, it's so difficult. I mean, I, I'm waiting for Muguruza. I mean, I think she's defending champion in, in Roland Garros and that is coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm sure that she really would like to have an event now where she plays well and uh, she will go far in. And uh, she has the game. I mean, she, she loves to play. She can play really well on it, and she's done that so many times. Uh, so I think I have to, if I have to f fill up with some more names, I would still say Moguru. So I'm waiting for her to uh, to have a good event, and I think that if she can get a good start of a tournament and she can get some confidence back, I think she can play well. Also, of course, Sharapova that would be better and better with each tournament. She lost a tough one against the Bouchard here in Madrid, but uh, I think that her as well has played well in the in, in Rome in the past. So she would definitely be one of the of, of the players as well who can do well. But again, very difficult to predict any any result. Uh, when it's so wide open it's a little bit more easy for in the men's uh, tournament i think yeah for sure i mean uh, rafael nadal is dominating again the the clay court season uh, looking extremely comfortable on the court with a lot of confidence he's playing his best tennis i've seen in a very long time uh, so he was definitely the man to beat. I mean, he's for sure the number one favorite. Uh, it's just that, of course, how many matches in a row can you win? Uh, physically, would he get tired soon uh, or not? But the, the way he plays and the confidence he has now, uh, he's going to be very difficult to beat. And then you have the young players like Team is playing well, Zverev is playing well, uh, also, you know, with a lot of confidence now doing well. Uh, Djokovic, after, who's still in Madrid, is playing score quarterfinal today uh, after the shock of, of uh, letting his whole team go the last week he's, he's still in, in in Madrid and playing well uh, and the Murray of course the world number one is looking for for a good event before Roland Garros so uh, you have a lot of contenders of course to to Nadal but uh, still he's the man to beat but do you think because uh, Rafael Nadal he won in Monte Carlo he won in Barcelona if he wins in Madrid Open and in Rome is there a limit how much he can win or is it better for him to win as much as possible before French Open or do you think could it be good for him to lose in the quarters in Madrid or in Rome because to, to save some energy to Roland Garros? I don't think so. I think that, uh, I mean, uh, if you just look at his results in the past, it's obviously it's, it's, it's one of Nadal's really strengths is his motivation and his dedication. It doesn't matter what tournament it is or if it's practice or if it's a match. Uh, he's always play the same with the same intensity and for him to keep on winning I think is just good uh, I mean uh, 10 times now he has won tournaments he comes to you know so I think that it's uh, it, it's just good for him to keep on winning but uh, keep in mind yes of course that he that means that of course he needs to be healthy so if it's uh, any doubt with all those matches he has played that he starts to feel a little bit somewhere uh, of course it would be better to rest but uh, uh, to lose no I don't think it's a good I think he should keep on this run uh, the fear is back in the locker room uh, he knows that the players now really don't want to see him in the draw in Roland Garros. Uh, so I think he just won't keep on going and you can see how much he, he enjoys the moment. And Nadal is looking for his A title in Rome where Andre Murray is the title def defender. And when he won last year, it was the first time sin since 2004 that anyone else than Djokovic or Nadal took the the title in Rome. At last, Thomas, if you see it on the circumstances, how the game is played in Rome, if you compare to Madrid, what's the difference and what's the similarity? Uh, it's a little bit slower. Uh, Madrid is played on a latitude. Uh, the ball is going quick in the air and the bounce really high. But still, a warm day in Rome, the ball is, uh, is reacting to spin a lot as well. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's not a huge difference between the two tournaments, but a little bit. Uh, but I don't think it would be, it would be a factor for the players when they're coming in. And this is the third and last Masters on clay this year. But it's, of course, not the end of the clay season because we have French Open on Roland Garros. And then Thomas and I will be back. See you then. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching and listening to us. And we see you soon again. And soon it's time for Roland Garros.